Standing up in McKinney, this is According to Callus, episode 587, coming to you on the 21st of February, the year of our Lord, 2024, and today we're going to just kind of talk about why are these things happening, right? There's a whole lot going on, uh, international, national, everything going on, and we'll probably touch base just a tad on the primary election because, well... We need to, and we can. Before I get to the meat of the subject, right? Before I before I jump into the today's topics, let me remind you the best way that you can help me continue to grow the program, to be heard, to make a difference, to be involved, is to like, share, and subscribe to this program. Follow me on your favorite podcatcher. Follow me on the social media. I have a page at According to Callus <clears throat> on Facebook, as well as a group. I jump over to MeWe and Gab from time to time, usually once a day, to go ahead and upload my program and share it away. And you can always catch me at the email and or cell phone that are prominently posted right on the website. I am not hard to find. I'm not going anywhere. And when I am not doing this, I try and be active in the community, standing up for liberty. (laughs) Well... Here we go on with the program. Oh, and I'm sorry. I should also say my stuff is still up on YouTube, notwithstanding their own problems. All right, on with the program. Here we go. First up, we're going to spend just a few more moments talking about uh, Sleepy Creepy, right? The resident in chief, Mr. Robinette. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, so it may be interesting to note that it is only recently that the uh, general media has paid attention to the fact that the guy clearly is not all there. Now, look, you get to be that age, those things happen. That, that That's something we've been aware of for quite some time. It was evident that even Ronaldus Magnus, right, to borrow the term from the great Rush Limbaugh, the former master of the air. (laughs) Uh, It can't be avoided. Time eventually gets you. So it is curious to me that his handlers, his family is okay with what has been happening, that, that they've gone along with this scenario. I don't think they're doing him any favors. I know they're not doing the country any favors, but here we are. And then we have the political showmanship going on in uh, DC, right? Will they impeach my orcas or not? And the sad thing is, is the impeachment is meaningless because we know the Senate's going to do nothing. I mean, even if we had a majority of Republicans in the Senate, I highly doubt that they would follow through and do anything. It's as if you get to D.C. and nothing ever happens to you. There is no downside. It's your your bulletproof. Unless, of course, you happen to partake with uh, some extracurricular activities with a former ISIS bride, then you may find yourself without a congressional seat. But again, the man's still walking around freely, doing what he does best, whatever that may be, and uh, no consequences, just like Eric Swalwell. You know, these guys shack up with known foreign spies and nothing happens. What world is that normal? What world is that good? And I don't care what letters after their last name. It's a problem. So when we look at the degraded person that uh, currently resides at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue and we're all pretending there's nothing going on there, we're all pretending that everything's a okay. Just now, the media decides to admit, well, maybe not. Could it be they're looking for a last-minute replacement? Now, look, I know there's some folks over on the right-wing side of things. They have spent a whole lot of time making the case that we're going to end up with Michelle Obama running. I don't know that that's even plausible. I suppose, potentially, at their convention, they could put somebody else in. The other name I've heard multiple times would be RFK Jr. Honestly, folks, I really think that this election is designed for the Democrats to lose. I think 
that they're purposely looking to hand off the hot potato, the economic mess that is soon to befall us, onto a Republican administration. I mean, it seems to me that be the smartest choice. I mean, we went from, you know, 60 miles an hour to oblivion to 120 miles an hour into oblivion, and we're very, very close to that oblivion. Well, why not just jump off and hand the steering wheel to somebody else that you can blame? I mean, it makes perfect logical sense to me. I don't know why anybody uh, is shocked by that notion. I, and some people apparently are. But I don't think that they want to win the presidency. I think they want the Donald to win. They're going to bury him. They're going to make sure he gets nothing done, just like in the first term. And when the economy goes to, well, the dark side, they're going to blame the Republicans. They're going to blame conservatives. They're going to blame the MAGA people. Now, I don't believe, honestly, that the majority of the people that subscribe to the notion of MAGA have any well-formed ideas on how the economy works. Now, there are some people that have joined with MAGA. There are some people that are, let's say, big fans of what the president did last time around. That is the Donald. Uh, and they're hopeful that he can maybe pull us out of the tailspin. And there are some very, really smart, intelligent guys that will undoubtedly be involved in this. And again, I'm using guys in the Latin form. Get over yourselves, people. Um, I don't suspect that the average voter, though, and let's be honest, the average voter across the board on the spectrum has very little idea of how the economy works at a macro level or sometimes even on a micro level. They're just trusting that the so-called experts, the leaders, will find a way to navigate the dangerous waters of which we find ourselves. I don't think that's possible, which is why I, I don't see any reason why they would not want the Donald to win. Now, I think, you know, the, the grand scheme of things, maybe we pick up a Senate seat or two. But it's I mean, even if you've got 52 Republican votes, you're not going to get anything done, not of any consequence. I mean, you might get a couple more judges appointed. Okay. That, I mean, that's been good, but really uh, that's all we're going to get. And you know, the Congress, I mean, we, what do we got? Uh, six votes to play with if that, and we can't even get people that are obviously a problem impeached, obviously a problem called on the carpet. Again, I, I'm not going to hold my breath. I said many, many times, I don't think there is any solution for the national, uh, Government. I don't think that there is any coming back from the destruction of D.C., uh, meaning the destruction they have wrought on our country, not the destruction of D.C. But while we're at it, uh, I feel like I need to just throw this in because it's unavoidable in some you know places. I'm sure you all heard about this A24 movie, Civil War. Right. And if you haven't, take a time out, go watch the trailer. I mean, the second trailer is even better in the first trailer, if you want my opinion. Now, the second trailer um, doesn't contain the segment with the probably the best meme that's come out this last couple of years. But the scene, I guess, that makes the meme. But in either case, it's just very powerful, very interesting and even though I'm fairly certain I know where this show is going to come down on, right? I, I'm fairly certain the same trope that's going to be presented for all of us to just absorb and eat. I'm pretty excited about this. I, I want to see the movie. I want to see what plays out in it. Um, Let's call it cautiously optimistic. I mean, maybe just maybe something else will be played out here. I'm not going to hold my breath. But it, but it looks very interesting. It looks almost exciting. That somebody's actually willing to take on this subject and put a story to it. Now, depending on how well they do with it and what happens, it could actually, you know, what do they call it? Predictive programming, right? They, they, they keep showing you things that they want you to accept going forward. Well, again, in case I haven't been clear in the past, in no way, shape or form would I, invo would I uh, encourage invoke, provoke anybody taking up arms against somebody else within these United States. Now we've got bad guys and girls for that matter. We've got bad actors. 
that are present, naturally born here. We've got a whole heck of a lot that have been imported here. Lots of bad actors. And those folks will need to be dealt with. Those folks are probably in positions of authority one way or another. Perhaps they make up the so-called fifth column. Perhaps they're just here as sleeper agents. Who knows? But the real scary thing is they may actually be working in concert with certain factions of our own government. Uh, That bothers me. It concerns me. I can't prove it out. I don't have any direct evidence. I'm not even making a clear accusation of anybody up to something bad. It's just, what else is going on? What else shall I make of it? How do I ignore what I see plainly in front of me? Should I not believe my lying eyes is, you know, the old frame? I, I don't know. But when we look at the progress we've made, and finally, finally, we after three years, the governor of Texas decided that, well, maybe now, maybe now I'm going to take an opportunity to do something. I'm going to push back. Now, in fairness, looking at the bigger picture, it's a 5% pushback. Now, he's making a tactical stand. He's making a well-thought-out reasoned argument. He, he's on good, firm, constitutional and legal ground. And not that any of that really matters because most people have already made up their mind on this. Most people have already chosen a side. They know what they're going to do. They know what they're going to believe and nothing they hear, see, or have played out in front of them is going to change their mind, which is sad. I think people need to be open to the idea that perhaps not everything you learned is true. Perhaps everything that we thought was the case is inaccurate. Perhaps now that we're actually looking at things, we understand that there is far more authority and power within the state government than we've expected or taken for granted, if you will, or yeah, just it's already there. It never left. It just hasn't been exercised. Now, Look, state power has been used and abused in the past, both at the state level and the federal level. I'm not going to justify the actions of something that happened 20 years or 10 years before I was born. Whether I would have supported it then or now is irrelevant. Bad people do bad things. Bad ideas get protected and enforced by state slash federal power all the time. But just because somebody misused it even if it was an appropriate use, but misused it for an inappropriate thing, doesn't mean it isn't real, doesn't mean it doesn't matter, doesn't mean it shouldn't be used now. Case in point. So Greg Abbott, Governor Abbott's finally done what I would call the bare minimum with making a stand at the border. Now, I'm enthusiastic that he did it finally, yes. I think it's the right thing to do, but the reality is it looks a lot like political posturing. It looks a lot like forcing somebody's hand or trying to force somebody's hand. It doesn't really look like it's a principled action that was long past due. I mean, if we were really interested in solving this problem, the real question is, where were these folks in 2020? Where were these folks in 2021 when they were in session and they had an opportunity to do something about this? Where were all of our state reps and our state senators? Why weren't they calling on the governor to do something then And now in the past, when they had a good, distinct rationale and reason to do so. Again, where were they in 2023? Very little came out of the Texas Senate or the Texas House encouraging or even pushing the governor to take action to protect Texas. I mean, it's one thing to get the resident in chief to ignore the nation, especially if they think his handlers that they're going to get a benefit of cheap labor and cheap voters, right? Some more sheep, if you will, to be sheared and controlled. If that is their end goal, then they have done an excellent job of that over the last three plus years. But just maybe we have a few governors out there that aren't on board with this. They don't like this. Certainly we have some state reps or state senators that know what's going on here and are accurately disgusted by it or appropriately disgusted by it and accurately have determined that the state has the opportunity, indeed the responsibility to do something about it. So maybe just maybe there's been phone calls going on in the background. There's been pushing and leveraging going on to get Abbott 
to the point where he was going to stand up and do the right thing. I would like to believe that. But then when you look over at the federal level, I don't understand why it is that there isn't somebody in the national government that just stands up and says, well, actually, Mr. Resident, had you been doing your job, we wouldn't have to be doing this at the state level. Actually, resident in chief, if you were to actively follow the Constitution and do your job, these states wouldn't have to step up and declare an invasion and do it for you. Now, perhaps Ted Cruz has done something like this, and I've missed it. You know, Ted's usually spot on on these things, so we, we want I want to give him a free pass. But I haven't seen anything like this really going on. I haven't seen a slew of congressmen showing up and saying, we need to do something, make a difference on that border. We need to deal with this problem. No, nothing. I mean, they give more press to the, the five ladies that got elected that are completely, in my opinion, incompetent, unqualified to serve our country because they... <laughs> They stir the pot. They're properly good leftists, right? They're uber progressives. And while that may sell in their home state or their home district, the rest of the country looks at them like, huh, what? Why? I mean, to have one of them actually state that my uh, allegiance is to Somalia or whatever it is country over there that she said. And, and look, I'm not dismissing which country it is. I was fairly sure it was Somalia, but if I got it wrong, just know it's not intentional. She's from Minnesota. There's a whole lot of Somalis in Minnesota. I'm not really sure why we feel the need to get involved in a foreign, let's call it, uh, situation, power struggle or whatever else. But that's what we do. Historically, that's what the United States has done since it became a global empire. So why should it surprise us that we get our own elected officials going there and openly advocating that we need to be sticking our nose in somebody else's business? It should come no surprise to you if you've been watching what's been going on for the last, oh, I don't know, year and a half here with Ukraine. Russia, Ukraine, they're fighting over territory. That is essentially Russian territory. Let's let's not kid ourselves here. It's cousins battling it out for control. And I mean, come on. You, you didn't really understand that. I mean, I've talked about this several times before. There's no reason, there's no advantage for the United States to be sticking their nose in this. As a matter of fact, if we would have just said, yeah, there's no NATO for you. We're going to respect the agreement we made with Russia, you know, a couple of decades ago, giving them their buffer zone, something that makes them feel comfortable. It doesn't matter if they're communists or not. They're not at the moment. Why would we want to provoke and encourage another war? Pat Buchanan gets this. In fact, he's warned about it since the early 2000s. Hey, guys, we probably ought to quit doing this. Hey, guys, we shouldn't be antagonizing the Russians. Hey, guys, you know, I'm no communist. I, In fact, I'm one of the biggest anti-communists there is in history, Pat Buchanan. I'm telling you this is not a good idea. Did anybody listen? No. I mean, not even the people right of center got it. In fact, we've been sold this false bill of goods by the neocons for so long, we can't even tell which end is up. And if that wasn't enough... No, no, we have to support what's going on in Gaza and the latest variation of the war between the uh, Israelis and all their Arab brothers and sisters that surround them. Now, again, this is probably not first cousins fighting, but third cousins fighting, right? I, I mean, I know there's a lot of Ashkenazis that have moved there and Europeans and even some Africans that came there saying, hey, we're Israeli by, you know, heritage we're coming here to take part in the uh, jewish homeland okay that's fine that's great but you've been messing around with your neighbors for so long that they all hate you and you've done nothing to get them to stop hating you and they may never stop hating you i get that i know the history not super well but well enough of that area that there's really never been any peace there unless somebody else is there with a boot on everybody's neck whether it was the British and the French, whether it was the Ottomans, whether it was the Persians, whether it was the Greeks, whether it was the Romans, it doesn't really matter. So long as somebody's been there putting a boot on their neck, they pretty much behave themselves. And if you doubt me, just look at the Balkans when they essentially had the Russians putting their boot down on them, right? Or, or for that matter, various other um, neighboring states where the Russian, Soviet, whatever, 
basically said, you're going to behave, you're going to do these things, or otherwise we're going to make your life miserable. You know, that's exactly what was going on with Afghanistan. We stuck our nose in that business too, but the United States just doesn't seem to learn. We seem to think that we can fix everybody's problems when we have so many problems of our own that we refuse to address, starting with our own border issues, starting with the fact that we've, at this point, imported 3% of our population. They acknowledge that they've imported at least 10 million people in three years. Now, I don't know about you, but there's no way those folks are going to be assimilated or the massive quantities that have come here have any interest of being assimilated and become part of the country and the culture of which they've relocated to. In fact, I suspect a good number of them did, in fact, come here for a better life or to take care of their family in a foreign country. I don't fault those people for doing that. But along with the ride was a whole lot of people that came here to do bad things and take advantage of our situation and take advantage of our foolishness, quite frankly. And we pretend there's nothing going on there. As a matter of fact, our federal government is, and a lot of state governments for that matter, are more concerned about the so-called right-wing extremists, right? The nationalists, the white nationalists, the Christian nationalists, the whatever they want to call us, they're more concerned about us than the foreign nationals that are coming of military age here in mass, that they don't know where they're going. And oh, by the way, they're probably under somebody else's command and control. Unless, of course, unless, of course, you're willing to believe that perhaps they're working in concert with certain factions of our own federal government. I mean, that is the scary truth of the matter, right? It is a possibility that that's going on. No, I can't prove it. And I'm sure they've set up enough firewalls and breaks to provide plausible deniability. And I would expect nothing less. But again, what else should we think? Why would they tolerate this and encourage this to be going on for three plus years? And if they didn't want it to happen, why is it this way? Why are we in this situation? These are all very important questions, right? So we don't know if we're going to get another term of resident Biden or not. It's highly unlikely. Myself, I think that Donald's going to win. I think it's been preordained that they want it to be his fault when things fall apart. But we may get a surprise, right? Maybe it's Michelle. Maybe it's Gavin Newsom. Maybe it's you know, RFK and they ride in on their white horse to save us and then just clamp down and crush the country after the economy goes south. Who knows? I don't know. And while we're on that topic of things going south, how many more wars or rumors of wars are we going to be dealing with and starting? I mean, we're maybe just maybe going to get a deal in Ukraine so we can pivot and go fight with some Chinese government people. I mean, realistically, we've used up a bunch of weapons that we can't replace. We've, you know, strangled our own supply lines over the last four years that we can't build anything up. We've offshored munitions building. Who thought this was a good idea? Who thought this was going to work out well for us? Well, there's a whole lot of Americans that are going to be very surprised when stuff goes south. Now, fortunately, I live in Texas, and fortunately, Texas has just enough umption left to say, well, yeah, it's been good, it's been fun, but you're all on your own. See ya. Maybe. I don't know. Wishful thinking. But we still can't make our own arms. We still can't make our own gunpowder. We can create our own energy. We do control the distribution of our energy for now. Of course, D.C. wants to take that away as well, and they're going to restrict our natural gas sales. How are we going to tolerate that? By what right can they do that? Who cares? Tell them they made their opinion, come and enforce it. And then when the federal agents show up, have the Texas State Guard, have the you know state troopers, have the Texas Rangers escort them to the border. Who knows? Who cares how that plays out? They're purposely <laughs> ruining Texas. And we shouldn't stand by and take it. And I don't care if you've got a D after your name, if you've got a two brain cells between your ears, you should agree with me that tolerating the federal government destroying Texas is not something that we're good with. This is not something we're happy about. We can argue about what's right and wrong about how the state runs later, but we have to protect the state first and foremost. We have to make the most of our culture of here in Texian land, right? We, the Texans, we want to do this. And when we're at that, when we're on that, let's just be honest. There's a whole lot of manipulation that's gone on 
whether it's uh, weapons, whether it's ammunition, whether it's medications, whether it's high tech or mm, let's say um, high technology, perhaps would be the best way to phrase that parts, materials. We've offshored, we've <laughs> offshored so much of that. We're sitting ducks. Now, granted, there are still some people around that could perhaps pull off a miracle and give us the ability to gear back up and do something about it. You know, there's historical evidence of this being possible. You know, we funded the Soviets in the early part of World War II. We powered them and empowered them to move all their factories and all their supply uh, production facilities further east into the rurals. We gave them that money and they were able to tear down factories and relocate them. So it is plausible that we could do something like that, or we could reactivate some of these factories that have since been closed. But here's something you should very much keep in the back of your mind. Say any of the strange scenarios play out, right? Any of these woo woo scenarios. Who in the United States, who in these United States is going to be able to defend anybody or anything for a long period of time if they don't have food, they don't have ammunition, they don't have adequate firearms replacement parts, they don't have the high technology necessary to, I don't know, run cars, tanks, trucks, you know, trains for that matter. Who's going to be able to make that difference if we can't even make our own medication to heal the sick and the wounded? Hmm? Who thought that was a great idea? Hey, maybe, maybe if we listen to my hardcore libertarian friends, hey, we saved a couple of bucks on those products over the years. Yeah, but at what cost? We, we violated our own national sovereignty. We sold ourselves down a river. So I want to balance some of that money that we save and some of the advantages we take from working within the free market, but also keeping in mind that there's certain things you want to keep control of to protect your own country. There was an oversight there, and I don't think it was an oversight. I think perhaps, perhaps there's circumstantial evidence to suggest that it was done on purpose and with foreknowledge of what was going to happen long term. It was a way to neuter and disarm the American government per se, but the Americans, the Texians, absolutely. So when Sleepy Creepy talks about it's going to be nothing against our F-16s. Well, yeah, maybe he's right about that. You know, we could talk about the Afghanis fighting off the Soviet army, but they did it because we supplied them the whole time. And then the Afghanis fought off the American army because everybody else in the world was supplying them, including ourselves, right? We would ship them to group A in Afghanistan. Group A would then sell it or allow it to be stolen by group B, and they would use it against us. And here we are. We've learned nothing. So when we sit back and consider why are these things happening? We need to be honest with ourselves. These things are happening because we keep causing them to happen. Because we keep allowing them to happen. Because we don't learn from our mistakes. They talk about the idea that history repeats or at least rhymes and you would think that after, I don't know, 250 years, the American people would come to grips with the fact that freedom isn't free. In the defense of liberty, eternal vigilance is necessary. You would think those would be undeniable facts that they would have embedded into their heads, into the cultural consciousness. But in fact, it's been stripped away over the last two generations in large part courtesy of our government and indoctrination camps, also known as public schools, as well as the cultural entertainment, whether it's Holly Weird or New York, it doesn't really matter. They have taught us complacency. They have taught us to question nothing. They have taught us to not think. They have taught us to trust, quote unquote, the experts. They have given us the ability to become entirely dependent on them and the system. The real question is who benefits? I think we already know that answer. We don't even need to say it out loud. But in case you're wondering, it's not you. And with that, this has been According to Callus. Thank you for joining me on the Wednesday. This was episode 587. I hope I've answered the question as to why is it happening. And I will see you.
on the other side.